Xbox just rolled out a brand new update for its developer kit, and while this kind of news might sound small, it's actually a big deal. These behind the scenes upgrades directly affect how fast, how stable, and feature rich future Xbox games can be. From improved GPU debugging to faster build times, these tools show how Microsoft's quietly strengthening its ecosystem for devs heading into 2026 and the next generation of Xbox, handhelds, and the platform as a whole. Let's jump into it. All right, so this is a news article over at pureXbox.com. Xbox highlights four exciting updates added in the latest develop development kit release. Good news for game saves and Microsoft and Xbox in particular. Uh, so the latest Xbox developer kit here adds four key improvements. We've got enhanced GPU debugging. This means that you get more efficient graphics and optimization. Uh, you got improved asset build times. It's going to reduce iteration time for developers. In other words, from the time it takes to create your assets to bring them to you, it's, it's going to increase. It's just going to be faster. Better memory and management tools. Now, this is big because we've got the Series S and the Series X, and sometimes games are delayed because they need to be optimized for the Series S. You've got to hit both of those. Well, this is going to help that, right? This is going to help optimize performance on both the Series X and Series S, something that's huge for us as gamers. We're going to get games faster, uh, and when they do drop, they're going to be optimized. Uh, finally, you've got expanded support for third-party middle middleware. This is integration, uh, making cross-platform support, for instance, cross-platform. Did I say form plat? I can't talk today. Cross-platform development smoother here. Uh, it's also going to enable you know developers to connect different assets uh, and different utilizations uh, or different software products here uh, that you can utilize in your games. Now, Microsoft says this update is part of its ongoing effort to reduce friction and make the Xbox dev environment more developer friendly. I personally think that this is a strong signal that Xbox is doubling down on developer experience. And why does this matter? Why should I care as a gamer for this? Because remember, the next generation of Xbox is something that has never been done before. It is, it is console simplicity with PC freedom. And there's gonna be some struggles with that. Xbox has to nail this side of stuff. It's gotta get developers all on one page. It's gotta provide the tools necessary for developers to easily, quickly make the most optimized games as possible for your experience, thus making it easy for Xbox and developers to plug and play those into your console experience that gives you the freedom of a PC. Uh, this directly affects or directly shapes rather the quality and variety of games hitting the platform. Uh, this spotlight usually, I mean that, and that spotlight usually for first party games or games on Game Pass, but these kind of announcements, these kinds of updates rather are what make all games possible to drop on the Xbox platform and the future next gen Xbox slash PC hybrid that's coming uh, possible. This is a good signal in my in my opinion. For developers, it means shorter build times, it means more efficiency, uh, it means easier to debug stuff, uh, more time to polish your games, more time to I innovate for gamers. I think that translates ultimately into s more consistent 60 frames per second performance, fewer bugs, and more games. Uh, just more games overall. So uh, I think this also suggests rather that Microsoft's strategy isn't just about acquiring studios. It's about empowering them with better tools. This is this this is big in that realm. Again, I think this is key. Nailing this side of stuff behind the scenes, a smoother dev pipeline is key to having uh, success as Xbox move to platform wars here. As Xbox moves into this next generation where there are no no walled gardens, uh, I think it's a it's key for them to entice new partner partners into the Xbox ecosystem. Hey, I really want to develop this really badass game. I don't know if it's worth it for us to bring it to Game Pass. I don't know if it's worth it for us to bring it to the Xbox platform. It's too difficult to bring to your platform. As you increase these tools, as you move to something that is unified across PC and console, you take down that wall, you take down that friction, and you empower more games and more game developers to come thus benefiting players overall. This video is sponsored by something that I actually helped build, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys because I hit that wall myself, and it's called the reset. There was a point where I realized that something was off in my life. I work from home, I play games, I make content, but I still feel and felt completely alone, surrounded by screens, but nobody's actually there. I don't interact with anybody. So I worked with a licensed therapist to figure out how to break that loop. I implemented those steps, I tested them, and from it came the Reset Toolkit. It's a free one-page guide that helps you get unstuck when life starts to lag, mentally, physically, emotionally. 
It's not therapy. It's very practical. I did the work. It's helped me. And I did that work so you don't have to. And when you download it, you'll also unlock the Reset Newsletter. It's a weekly dose of real tools and stories about building a healthier mindset, especially for people like us who live online all the time, especially for gamers or content creators like us, people who work from home. Grab it for free right now at theresetgg.com. That's theresetgg.com. Or hit the link below. Sign up for the newsletter because when life lags, Sometimes we need to hit reset. Uh, it does beg the question, is Microsoft's competitive edge now in this new age of no more walled gardens where they're outsourcing hardware to their handheld for now and preparing for for the next generation of consoles and this new world that we're entering where y y you're not limited, you're not walled off into where you decide to play your games is microsoft's biggest competitive edge shifting from hardware to developer support and i think i don't know if it's its biggest competitive edge i think scale is its biggest competitive edge uh you have one of the biggest companies in the world doing this but i do think it does it does mean that their vision for hardware hardware parity is is here the series x and series s uh struggled at first because raw specs, uh, you know, they were just less on the Series S and games really struggled. Baldur's Gate 3 is one of those that struggled and they had to make some adjustments. Say, okay, okay, we don't need parity across. You can you can do X, Y, and Z. Uh, but making it so that, so that your software pipeline enables games to launch across all of your hardware devices easily, more easily uh, is key, is key going forward. I think this is a developer first strategy, or I think that they can take more of a developer first strategy, uh, you know, moving to software first or software support, uh, because they're essentially making it easier to build, optimize and port games to the Xbox. And remember, these are, these are going to also be able to be played on the PC. So what does that entail? Uh, I think that's a long term play that outlasts console cycles. Honestly, when you look at the phone era, every app you have on your phone works with all phones. I think and Phil Spencer has said this. That's the goal. That's the goal there. The, this gives you the ecosystem, the ecosystem advantage, uh, a more efficient dev environment strengthens Game Pass. It strengthens the Xbox cloud uh, and it strengthens that PC integration, uh, all powered by the same tool set. Again, it means in the next generation, there's not really going to be in my mind, especially if they do this correctly. There's not going to be an Xbox console game and a PC game. They're going to be one and the same, in my opinion. So it's going to be really, really interesting. It's an, it's an interesting proposition for game developers going forward. So I don't know that it's a competitive edge, them, them shifting from hardware to software support, let's say. But I think moving this direction overall gives them a competitive edge being the first one to do it really leading the charge here yeah i think that's a competitive edge would love to know what you guys think though let me know in the comments below what did i get right what did i get wrong in that uh the the other question is how do these updates influence future game pass titles or even first party production speed number one i think you get faster iteration iteration loops from first party titles for sure uh first party you know you've got the resources you've got the core software there at your disposal as a first party developer this is going to mean in my opinion that new content hits faster more regular for first party studios not only that not only does it hit faster but it hits faster with higher polish you know you, you know how it, the, there's a joke like oh on the online era games drop broken and then they get fixed over time i think i think as these tools are more optimized and as we move in this direction that's not going to be as as common of a meme <laughs> as it's been in the past i think day one titles on game pass i think day one first party titles will drop highly polished i think they for the most part drop pretty polished but there has been uh that is a meme it's a meme that exists in gaming for sure uh and i, I think one other thing that I think this does is it enables experimentation to happen from your first party studios more, right? Because there's less friction. So when there's less friction, studios can prototype and test new ideas faster, which is really interesting. Uh, and, and I think we can expect more creative risks 
which is going to be, I mean, that's been a complaint of gaming. Hey, we're basically getting the same five titles all the time or iterations on, on you know, these the same the same five genres, the most popular genres. Nothing nothing new has really happened here. How do we get more AAA titles to experiment? And I think this could be a part of that. Overall, I just think it's it's synergistic what, what Xbox is doing here, what Microsoft is doing here. And if you can see, this is just another piece of that puzzle and piece of that plan that comes together alongside the ROG Xbox Ally X, alongside what we know on the next generation of Xbox consoles here. Uh, these updates in the development. Well, it's interesting. The Xbox is dead, guys. Remember the, that crowd? Where are they? Where are they? We're getting consistent updates, consistent outputs here that, uh, that enable the vision, that bring that vision to pass and... It's really interesting. It's a fun time to be a part of gaming. Well, let me know what you guys think. What do you agree with me? What do you disagree with me? I'm not the most technical guy, so I may have... I may, Let me know what I got wrong here. Definitely. I read all the comments. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. My name is S1 The Gamer. We drop videos like this all the time right here. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye-bye-bye.